My name is Bill Maxwell. I'm a fourth generation Stocktonian. Um, and here are a few images of my family uh, that I, because I, I put together these PowerPoint presentations using images from the bank's collection, um, I get to choose the images. So I figured I'd put a few images of my family in here. So you have uh, there in the upper left, that's my uh, grandfather and my great grandfather on the steps of their house in, in Stockton. And then the uh, lower left is my namesake, William Maxwell Sr. Uh, he uh, had an auto parts, chain of auto parts stores, and that's a caricature written, uh, drawn of him by Ralph Yardley, who did cartoons for the Stockton Record and did caricatures of local prominent citizens. And my grandfather was pretty prominent in Stockton. He was a, um, he was a, on the, uh, the board of the Port of Stockton. He was the president of the Chamber of Commerce and was a prominent businessman. Um, and then in the upper right is the uh, Maxwell family gathering right after the Second World War. That's my father, William Maxwell Jr., there on the left. And as you can tell from the look on his face, man, is he happy to be home. Because he came up the, uh, what they called the soft underbelly of Italy during the war. Uh, and uh, saw uh, quite a bit of action. And then in the bottom right there, that's uh, me uh, there over on the right uh, behind my sister with sporting the little bow tie. That's me and my cousins celebrating uh, Thanksgiving up here in Jackson at my, my aunt and uncle's house. So I'm fourth generation Stocktonian, which makes my son fifth generation, and um, charter member of the merchant class. My grandfather, my great grandfather, had his own business. My grandfather had his own business, the auto parts store. My father had his own business in Lodi, uh, printing and, and distributing tax forms. Uh, and then I got into the book business right out of college. Um, there on the left, that's my grandfather's uh, business there where you can see it says, uh, on the right, it says W.L. Maxwell Batteries and Auto Electric. And then the upper uh, right is uh, the Harvard bookstore where I got my start in 1975. And then eventually I bought that store on the lower right there, the bookmark on Pacific Avenue in Stockton. So um, Stockton uh, has a rich and varied uh, history. This is one of the oldest image, uh, images of Stockton. Uh, the uh, oak tree that I was mentioning earlier is gone by this point. Um, they, so there used to be an oak tree at about this location that supposedly they dispensed justice at the end of a rope from that tree, but apparently um, they were hanging people in Stockton so often that early on they built a permanent gallows so that they would, you know, they wouldn't have to construct one when they needed it. So this is one of the earliest images of Stockton, looking south, uh, and. Uh, Stockton uh, was the jumping off point for the whole southern mines. Um, thousands and thousands of miners came through Stockton on their way to come up to the mines. Um, there were estimated that in one month in the 18, early in the 1850s, between three and 5,000 miners came through Stockton on their way coming up here. Uh, there were, uh, in one month, there were something like 90 wagon trains between Stockton and Sonora. And um, it, there, there, during the winter, during the rainy season, um, it would take you, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the geography of Stockton, but from the, from the headwaters of the channel on Center Street back to about where Highway 99 runs through on the east side of town. In the winter, in the rainy months, it would take you a day to get from the port to 99 because there was so much mud and manure and, and all the rest of it. So it was not a, not a, pleasant, not a pleasant place. But uh, uh, so Stockton quickly became a boom town. It was the center for agriculture and transportation. And then the Civil War comes along and practically bankrupted the entire country. Uh, and but you know Stockton, San Joaquin County was predominantly um, union-backed. Uh, certainly Charles Weber, who was the founder of Stockton, was a pro-union man. And again, I get to I, I, this is a, a reunion of uh, Grand Army of the Republic veterans in Lodi, probably in the 1890s. And if you look over there on the right, uh, the uh, fourth gentleman. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, is an African American gentleman, which speaks to the fact that Stockton 
has always been a very diverse population. We are still today considered to be one of the one of the most, if not the most, diverse city in the United States. We have just a huge, um, you know, Hispanic, uh, Sikh, Filipino, Black. I mean, it just it's 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 very you know very mixed community. So. Um, the Civil War comes along, practically bankrupts the whole nation, and uh, you know banks were failing, there wasn't any standard monetary policy, so in the wake of all that, in 1867, 29 prominent businessmen in Stockton pledged $100,000 of their gold to found what was then called Stockton Savings and Loan Society. And when you read the original prospectus, it reads like who's who of Stockton. And there you go and you read the names, you know, Boers, Shippy, these names which are still around town. You still see streets named after them, developments named after them. The bank was an immediate success. They um, loaned $1,000 to a farmer to buy seeds before they'd ever taken any deposits in. By the end of the first month, we have all of the ledgers going back to 1867, and I've looked at them, and then in the first month, at the end of the first month, they were $30,000 in the black. So it was very successful from the, from the get-go. And uh, this was where the all things, where it all started there. Uh, it, the sign there says, this is 181. Uh, the, the bank's offices that were in the Union Copper Mining offices, were at, which, which were at 179, which were upstairs above the, above the dry goods store. But this is uh, South El Dorado Street back in the 1860s. And then uh, the bank quickly became successful and continued to grow, and it was decided that they needed to move out of the banks, out of the uh, copper mining offices, uh, and moved into this building in 1875 uh, on Hunter Square, and occupied this building until 1908, when they built Stockton's first skyscraper, and, and this was they, they built this for the for the bank uh, as their headquarters building, and it's still there, still looks pretty much like that, um, and but unfortunately it's vacant now because um, the you know powers that be decided that they didn't want to have to bother you know r renting it out unless they could find one tenant that would take the whole take the whole building. So you know. Moving along through time, um, the, the, eventually the name is changed to Stockton Savings and Loan Bank, and then it just becomes, in the 50s, just becomes Bank of Stockton, which is what we know it all as today. And here is our modern headquarters, built in 1960, a classic mid-century modern design building. It looks a little different today because they've added a second floor there in the front, but um, uh, when, it, when this building opened, it was considered the most modern banking facility on the West Coast. And we continue to grow, we continue to build, and so we've recently, that's the Dale Road branch there in Modesto, and then more recently we opened the, uh, the new branch there in Oakdale. And, um, you know, we tend to build fairly significant structures when we build our own structure. And it's interesting because you're driving down, like in Oakdale, you're driving down and there's, there's the, you know, there's the Wendy's, there's the Tilt Up, there's the auto parts store, and then there's that. And it's like, it just really kind of stands out. So um, Stockton is the oldest bank in California, still operating under its original charter from 1867. Uh, I think this is still current, 20 branches. Uh, the footprint just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And as the footprint gets bigger, my job gets bigger because I'm looking for photographs of those areas that we can then use uh, in our advertising and to brand the bank and to use in the calendar. So in 1990, Bob Eberhardt, who was president of the bank, uh, had the opportunity to purchase a photograph collection from Leonard Cavello. And Cavello had been a commercial photographer in Stockton for probably 40 years. Uh, he had passed away and his uh, heirs came to the bank and came to Bob and said, you know, we've got 20,000 photographs and would you be interested in buying them? And Bob saw an opportunity and the price was certainly right. Um, and uh, I think everybody probably figured that because of the relationship between the bank and the University of the Pacific that Bob would just buy the photographs and then give them to the university. 
Well, instead, he bought the photographs, and then he hired people from the university to catalog them and scan them and create a computer database so that they were accessible to the bank, but also to the public. And then the bank uses the images to brand their bank, to brand themselves as a the historic entity that, that they are. So it started out with 20,000 images. We now have well over 40,000 in the collection. And here's Leonard Cavello at work uh, as a uh, as a photographer. Um, he was a. Uh, he was an evidence photographer uh, for, he was the, uh, uh, the civic theater photographer. So um, there's, um, there's his, you know, his bio there. Uh, you know, you've probably seen his book, Motherload Memories and Stockton Memories, the, the things that he published uh, while he was still alive. Um, and then uh, here's him as a sheriff, working for the sheriff's department as a uh, evidence photographer with the sheriff's department. And as a consequence of that work, we have 800 plus photographs of accidents, crime scenes, train wrecks, you name it. And the thing that, that every time I look at these, especially this one, I'm just astonished that those things were m hunks of metal. And they weighed a ton, and there wasn't, there wasn't any plastic on them. But when they hit an immovable object, they destroy. They were destroyed just uh, like the, you know, the, the you know explode on impact cars we've got today. Uh, he was also the official photographer for Civic Theater, so the collection contains over 300 photographs of uh, uh, theater productions, and he was also the official photographer for the county fair. So we have all these county fair photographs as well, and all of these things really make this a unique, a unique collection and a unique asset. Um, and then. He had, he was, since he was a musician, he photographed his fellow musicians and musical venues, and that's him and his band up there on the left. He's at the drum kit, that's the Leonard Cavello band. And then um, the band there on the right, I'm trying to think what their name was. Um, that's them uh, you know, posing in the, in the 1960s in front of the, uh, the Delta King when it was still in Stockton. Unfortunately, it isn't in Stockton anymore. But that's another sad story. So uh, he, not only did, he, did Cavello take photographs himself, but he collected antique photographs and historic photographs. And so uh, I'll give you a little kind of a quick survey uh, as we move forward about some of the things that are in the collection. Um, the, the, uh, there on the upper left, uh, there was, there's a, a photograph of, of a family that just took photographs of their, you know, of the family and interior shots of their house. They're, they had a Victorian house and they would just take interior shots of the living room and interior shots of the den and then all these particular shots of different family members. And then over on the right, um, upper right there, I, I, you know, there was nothing identifying that photograph when I, when I uh, saw it the first time. And I'm imagining it that it's probably one of the um, early meetings of E. Clampus Vitus. Because if you look closely, uh, these guys are all playing cards and they got a couple of bottles. And then over on the right, there's a guy sitting in a wheelbarrow with his hat on his knee. Uh, which, you know, sounds to me like, you know, that's kind of, that's, that's clamper behavior. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, and, and who's to tell me I'm wrong? And then, uh, um, uh, then on the lower left, that's an aerial view uh, looking from the, um, uh, one of the churches, the top of one of the churches looking south down uh, San Joaquin Street. And there's the Masonic Temple building there, the big building there on the, on the upper right. And then um, the other view in the lower right is a view from the top of the courthouse. Actually, I think that's from the Yosemite Theater looking towards the courthouse. And that's looking down Weber Avenue. And in the upper left corner, you can see the Stockton Channel. And there's the Mason House. And there's the Masonic Temple there in the background. So um, the, the real gem of the collection, the crown jewel of the collection, uh, is the, are the glass plate negatives from Thomas Wells, who uh, started up in San Andreas and then eventually wound up in Stockton. Um, that's, his, that's, that's the man himself with those mutton chops. Um, and he, uh, he, there's 11 glass plate negatives that still to this day produce just these fabulously clear uh, prints. That's that's uh, the the print that you're looking at there is from one of the one of his glass plate negs, 
and he was uh, a, a portrait artist. Um, let me see, now I should have these people's names here. Yes, that's Rose Rooney there on the left and uh, C.W. Norton on the right in his full uh, Knights Templar regalia. And uh, uh, Wells did a, did a huge number of portraits of, of local citizens. Uh, he also made, uh, created candid historic photographs. Um, there on the left is the old uh, county courthouse, uh, which unfortunately they tore down in the 1960s. Um, which I think, in my humble opinion, just ripped the heart right out of the downtown. Um, and then, there, then uh, there's a, a shot on El Dorado Street looking west down the, uh, down the channel with one of the steamships there at, uh, at the dock. Um, and then the collection also contains works from J. Pitcher Spooner, who's probably the most well-known of um, Stockton photographers because he, he, was, he had such longevity. He started uh, in the 1860s in Stockton and uh, eventually retired in the 1890s. And then his uh, studio was actually taken over by Thomas Wells, who continued it on well into the 20th century. Um, but uh, I love this picture. I don't, you know, I don't think Spooner was quite that diminutive, but that camera certainly makes him look uh, look rather small, but that's quite a that's quite a camera, and I think that camera is still kicking around town somewhere. Um, and Spooner really concentrated on on recording his historical events. Um, he did all the portraits of uh, Charles Weber that were published in in the in Weber in the the, the history Tinkham's History of Stockton published in 1880. There's portraits of Charles Weber that were done by Spooner in there. Uh, I love the photograph here on the left. Um, that was at the opening of the uh, Agricultural Pavilion in Stockton in 1887, and that is a display created for a watermelon growing uh, co-op in Lodi. Before Lodi became such a great gro grape growing region, it was known for its watermelons. And in 1887, these guys got together and they constructed inside the, the Ag Pavilion a house made out of watermelons. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 you know, you, really, you, you can't see it from the, the, the detail here, but those, those posters that are on there are uh, um, lithographs of a bird's eye view of Lodi. And there's one hanging in the Lodi Public Library uh, and they're just, they're just stuck on the watermelons with like, you know, thumbtacks or pins or something. And, and one, of those, one of those lithographs today would sell for $3,000, $5,000, you know, and they're just, they're just stuck, they're just stuck on the watermelons with pins. Uh, and anyway, the, the, the image there on the right is what was known as Weber's Hole. Uh, that was at the head of the of that navigation on the Stockton Channel, and that photograph was taken in 1910 uh, when they started construction on the Hotel Stockton, which is still there, one of the few of the historic uh, buildings that's that's still standing in Stockton. Um, and here's the some of the portraits that Spooner took. That's Charles Weber, founder of Stockton, there on the left. And there was there used to be something in Stockton called the Fan Carnival, and apparently it was you know uh, like a, a carnival, but they it emphasized fans, and the girls would all dress up in these elaborate costumes with their with their fans, and they would have like a day long of events of parades and and, and performances and whatnot. And those are just a couple of, of Spooner's portraits. And the cool thing is, is that you can, you can draw a thread from William Rolofson, who was one of the very first photographers to come to California during the gold rush. And, you know, and then Sewell gets in, in business with Rolofson in 65. Spooner opens his studio in Stockton. Eventually Thomas Wells, who worked for so Sewell, takes over his studio in Sonora. Then he comes to Stockton, takes over Spooner's studio in Stockton, and then Leonard Cavello acquires all of these uh, glass plate negatives that Thomas Wells had created. So you can you can follow this little thread connecting, you know, the common thread that all of these all of these photographers going all the way back in, in California history. The other common thread is cheesecake. <laughs> For some reason, you give a guy a camera. 
and he's going to start women to take he's going to start asking women to take their clothes off, and a, apparently a surprising number of them do comply. So there on the left, you have uh, one of Spooner's boudoir photographs. Uh, you know, a, a rather chaste photograph by comparison, especially to the one in the upper left or the upper right, rather. Um, that's one of Wells's photographs, and apparently this particular Rubenesque model, she really liked to take her clothes off because we have several photographs of her uh, in the in the collection, and then the bottom right, that's uh, that's one of Leonard Cavello's photographs from the uh, from the county fair, and you know, and I I, I just refer to that as Leonard's got milk photograph. <laughs> So since I've been um, the, the, the archivist for the bank, uh, we have acquired a number of new, those, those that you just saw were all part of the original collection from Covello, um, but I've been adding things since I've uh, come on board. This year marks 20 years I've been with the bank which is pretty scary. Um, but um, one of the big collections that we got was the William McHenry Carson Family Archives. They had a place up here in Twain Hart, and um, they, and back when the bank uh, opened our Carson Oaks branch in North Stockton in 1960, uh, yeah. Um, the, they bought the property from the Carson family. The Carson family had been in Stockton since the 1850s, had a piece of property in North Stockton that they had been farming and ranching on for you know, all those years, and we purchased it in order to build our Carson Oaks branch. Uh, and because of our relationship with the Carson family, pictured there on the right, um, they, uh, when they ran out of heirs, they called the bank and they said, you know, we've got our family archive, which goes back to our great-great-grandfather's gold rush diary that he kept when he came around the horn to go to the gold rush in 1849. It starts with that, and then it extends up through all their, uh, their businesses, and there's photographs and letters and business ledgers, all the way up into the 1980s where you have like Girl Scout uniforms and baby shoes and things like that. And, uh, but there were all these original documents and photographs, the gold rush diary being the key one, um, and they said, we don't have any heirs, we don't want to give it to like the Bancroft Library or someplace because they'll just cherry pick the good stuff and jettison all the rest. So we'll give the entire family archive to the Bank of Stockton if you'll keep it intact as a as a uh, as a whole archive. And I went up and and you know and of course Doug Eberhardt, who was president at the time, he sends me up to Twain Hart to look at this stuff, and I'm, and I'm going, well, yeah, yeah, sure, we'll keep all this stuff together, because we got, we, we got hundreds of photographs and original letters and documents and stuff, and it's just a fabulous, it's just a fabulous collection, and I'm happy to say that we have, we have preserved it. Uh, also, one of Stockton's most famous citizens uh, was Tilly Lewis, who founded Flows Hill um, uh, Cannery and um, was very successful, um, was I think the first woman featured on the cover of Forbes magazine. Um, and uh, I, over the years, have managed to locate, well actually I live two doors down from her niece, so that helped, but I got stuff from her, but then also I, I, I went to an estate sale one time as is my want, and here were all these books, all these, all these photographs, little snapshots and stuff, just strewn around on a table, and and I'm starting looking at them. I go, wow, that's that's Tilly, that's Tilly Lewis in those, and so I told the the estate liquidator, I said, I'll take them all, just I'll you know f figure out a price, I'll take them all, and unfortunately a lot of them weren't weren't identified, but many of them I could tell. You know who was in the pictures. The the uh, the portrait there is one of her formal portraits. She's a very attractive woman. And then the the photograph on the right uh, is a uh, was taken at one of many dinner parties that she had. And that's that's her in the center in the back there. And then uh, Meyer Levy, Levy Lewis was her um, uh, uh, husband. Uh, her, she had two before him, um, but he was the, he's in the foreground there. And there was all these photographs of taken at their house. And of course, you know, they have, uh, you know, uh, black attendants at the, at the parties. She, you know, her, her original name was Weisberg, but she put on these huge Christmas parties every year. And, you know, but she, but she was, she was uh, quite prominent, she had a beautiful big house in Stockton, so we have all of this archive of, uh, of the Lewis Heiser estate. 
Um, and then uh, at, at several years ago, uh, Stockton Rotary, um, which dates back to 1912, they were given seven photograph albums that were put together by Charles Byrd. And Byrd was one of the founding members of Stockton Rotary. And he managed a lumber company on Weber Avenue in Stockton. And we just, you know, those of us that, that deal in historic artifacts just love this kind of stuff because he put together these seven photo albums in chronological order. Everything is labeled who, what, when, and where. And, and it's just this wealth, this incredible wealth of, of photographs and, and, and information. And we've used a lot of the images over the years in, in our calendar. Uh, and then more recently, uh, the historian in Lodi, the main historian in Lodi was a gentleman named Ralph Lee. Uh, and he had, been, he, he had been collecting stuff uh, for 40, 50 years uh, and had a huge collection. And I managed to get, because I knew when he passed and they were liquidating his estate, and, and I, since I've been dealing in used and rare books and photographs and art and stuff in Stockton since 1975, I know all the antique dealers, I know all the antique liquidators. And so they had this huge collection of photographs and, and other you know, memorabilia. And so they called me to come out and look at the stuff before the sale. So the night before the sale, I got to go out and go through all of the photographs and, and cherry pick all the good stuff, all the, all the original stuff. And these are a couple of, a couple of samples. Uh, this is a, a, a local bicycle confirmed there on the left with one of the floats, probably for the uh, uh, 1907 Grape and Wine Festival. And then uh, on the right there is uh, one of the inner urban trains that used to run between Lodi and, and Stockton. And I'm really happy that this particular antique dealer allowed me in early because while we were sitting at his house going over all these photographs, that somebody was breaking into the house out in the country and stealing anything and everything that was shiny, which was all of the, there was all this silver, plus Ralph had been a big, uh, he was big in, in Masonic order, so he had all these medals and all of this Masonic uh, memorabilia and stuff, and uh, somebody absconded with all of that. But his photographs are in our archive now. Uh, and then even more recent than that, uh, there was a local archaeologist who had been collecting photographs and, and Stockton memorabilia for, again, for 40 years. And he calls me up one day and he says, I've got cancer. I need to offload all this stuff. You know, come on over. So uh, I went over to his place and I couldn't believe what he, all of the stuff that he had. Um, so we wound up buying, buying his collection from him. Um, and the, the, the portrait of the man there over on the left, I don't know his name, but uh, I, I was, I, was on, I, I look on eBay, you know, I look for photographs and stuff on eBay. And one day there's a photograph of this same guy the same fence, same photographer, except now he's wearing like casual clothes. He's got on like a cowboy hat and an open collared shirt and jeans and whatnot. And, and I, so I, oh God, that, that, it didn't, it, again, it didn't give his name either, but it's like, oh, okay, that's the, that's the matching photograph. Yeah, well, I wasn't gonna pay $150 for it. It, it just, it, I'm, I'm spoiled, you know, by being able to buy a lot of this stuff really cheap. But uh, so somebody else has the, has the matching photograph. And then just kind of uh, random images that I pulled out of, out of uh, Roger Warner's collection. That's, there's uh, the, you know, the Growers Hall and Chet's restaurant you know, on, uh, in East Stockton. And then there's McLeod Lake, what it looked like uh, before they filled it in with the uh, Civic Auditorium there in the background. And the, the City Hall building would have been uh, just to the left in that photograph. So right now, where does it stand? We have 40,000 images, 40,000 plus. Uh, we have a lot of slides and film negatives that have never been, um, have never been scanned. Uh, <laughs> a few years ago, um, one of the police evidence photographers came to me and said, we've got all these four by five film negatives that we're storing and their mug shots and their crime scene evidence photographs going back to the 1950s and they're gonna pitch them. The police department doesn't wanna store these things anymore so they're gonna pitch them. Would the bank be interested? And so I spent a couple of months 
over, you know, you know how we, on TV when they show like a police department's laboratory, you know, their crime lab, and they got all these high tech computers, and they got all this, all this spiffy, you know, you know, state of the art equipment. Yeah, well, no. I, I spent, I looked at several thousand four by five film negatives on one of those funky little light boxes that's about that, you know, that's about that big and sits on top of the table. And I, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't tell me. They wouldn't give me the, the they, they had already sorted out all the goopy ones and murder scenes and stuff, but they, and they, they wouldn't tell me anything but the date about the rest of them because, you know, privacy concerns. So I went through all of these thousands of photographs looking for anything in the image that I could identify where it was. They'd let me, they'd let me have the date, but if I saw a street sign or a building I recognized or whatever, I pulled those out. But then there were all these mug shots. I mean, there were literally thousands and thousands of mug shots yeah, and, 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 and I just couldn't pass them up. I just, you know, I, I so I've, I've got them stored at the, I've got them stored at the, at the bank. And I don't, you know, someday, at some point, maybe somebody will make some kind of a project out of them. But it, it just, it's, it's, they're fun to go through and see the, uh, the uh, fashion sense of Stockton's criminal class from the, uh, from the 19, uh, you know, why do the guys always take their shirt off when the, you know, when the cops are chasing them? There's all these guys, you know, these guys wearing striped bell-bottom pants, no shirt, you know, long hair, Fu Manchu mustache. Anyway, they're, 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 they're a lot of fun to, to look at. So um, now the, the entire collection, or you know, 40,000 plus, are scanned, cataloged in a computer database. It's not available online. You gotta come to me. Uh, to, to look at the stuff, but it's, re it's very user-friendly. You can type in a name, an address, a subject, and it'll pull up whatever, you know, whatever we might have. So it's a, it's a really cool asset, not just for the bank, but also for the, for the public. I, I'm trying to think the requests that I got. Somebody's, you know those Arcadia Press books? Have they, have they done one on Murphy, Murphy's yet? There are some the people that do those routinely come to us because we've got all these great photographs that they want to want to use. Somebody's working on one for California agriculture and they're wanting images from us. Um, and then I get researchers that are looking. You know, everything is mundane as you know. Uh, you know, they're researching their house or the you know or family members or whatever. So it's it, the the requests are are varied, um, but it's all. Pretty, you know, pretty user friendly and, and readily accessible. Except I'm only there. I think there's the. Oop, I'm only there um, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 3, which is a great gig, and 20 hours a week, and and then I go play golf on Friday. Um, and so, so uh, we've been talking a lot about history, and photography uh, is a wonderful historic record. The older photography today you can't believe your eyes anymore because of Photoshop and because of what, the way that pictures can be manipulated. But these photographs from the previous century, they, you know, granted the world was not black and white, but still, they show what that place looked at at that particular time. Uh, so you've got uh, there on the upper left, that's a, the state bakery's delivery wagon. Um, the upper right, that was the photograph I was talking about earlier. Um, that's the Sagamore. That was a, a steamship built for Charles Weber in 1850. Um, and there's the supposed hanging tree there in the background behind it. And we can date that as one of the earliest photographs of Stockton because the Sagamore was built in 1850 and then it burned in San Francisco Harbor in November of 1851. So we can kind of, we can date that as being pretty early. And then lower left, that's an early picture of Sonora. And then the lower right is just, a, you know, this woman took photographs of the interior of her house, of her Victorian house. So, you know, photography really is a, 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 a wonderful historic record, but it's also an engine of regret. And I can't remember who coined that phrase, but uh, John Carroll used it in one of his columns. But um, you know, there on the left, there was the second courthouse, all, you know, quarried, the, the, the facade was all granite quarried up here, in the, up here in the mountains. It was one of a handful of um, uh, structures designed by that particular architect. Um, Myers, I think his name was, I probably have it written down somewhere. But it was, you know, it was, a, you know, a grand structure and they couldn't tear it down fast enough. And then, uh, and then they built 
that thing there on the right that re looks like a refrigerator box laying on its side. Uh, and there's, uh, there's Mayor Biederman um, sitting on the veranda at the Hotel Stockton saying, isn't it a wonderful thing that we have wrought? So um, please, please, if you have photographs, even if they're relatively modern photographs, uh, on the backs or somewhere, write who, what, when, and where. Other, you know, I mean, I see a lot of photographs that, I, yeah, that's a really interesting, cool photograph, but I, if I don't know where it was or who it is, it's, it's not, you know, it's a, a, a fraction of the value. And um, even if it's a relatively modern photograph, you know, photographs from the 1980s, um, you know, they may be the only photo, photographic record of that particular place at that particular time. So at least show them to somebody. You know, you, you show them to, you know, to Christopher or show them to, you know, just get a second opinion before you, you know, you, you throw them into the landfill. So uh, there's my information, my contact information, and that pretty much is my dog and pony show. I've got more power pre presentations that I could give you, but I, I'll, I'll save those for later. Uh, but uh, so if you, have any, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to uh, take questions, or if you wanna rush to the bar, you can, you can head to the bar as well. But uh, thank you for having me, and 